Well, we just like to welcome everyone here this afternoon. Uh, we still have some folks that are coming in and, and will be coming in as we come and go. As uh, you may have gathered, if you looked at the message on the website, at the Cal Mesa Church website, or may have heard the announcement in church this morning, because there are so many people who have things to say, share, we actually have two ways for people to participate today. One is for those who uh, are not really planning on saying anything, but just want to listen. There is a live stream of this that's actually going on at the same time uh, at, on the same uh, church YouTube channel that the service was. That's live streaming there right now. And then for those of you who would like to make some comments and share some things, uh, the Zoom room is, is here for us to do that. So it's an opportunity for us to be able to, to talk and share. Uh, you can imagine that uh, Lou's influence has touched people all over the world. And because we now have the ability to gather from all over the world, uh, there's the potential for lots and lots of people here today. So we just wanna encourage people to, uh, to be brief but meaningful so that everyone who would like to share something with Margie and the family will be able to do so. And uh, so we can all kind of enjoy uh, the opportunity to celebrate Lou's life together. So, and already we have a number of folks who are ready to, to share a bit and make some comments. Just before we do that, let me let you know that uh, Marjorie and Barbara and uh, some family members are here. So they're in the Zoom with us, in the Zoom chat with us. They're there with Kathy McMillan's name on their square if you're having trouble finding them. So you'll be able to see them as well as share with them. And so with that in mind, uh, the first person on the list that I see here is Dwight Nelson's uh, connection. So we'll give Dwight a chance to speak. Thank you, Ken. Uh, just joining everybody and saying what a beautiful, beautiful tribute to to lose life, his ministry. He's touched all of us. And it, the fact that everybody's queuing up, you want to get associated with a great man any way you can. And uh, it's an honor to to join uh, for these few moments. Um, I'm going to call him Uncle Lou because when you're a missionary's kid, you are forbidden under the pain of uh, great discipline to call anybody by their first name. So we knew Uncle Lou and Aunt Margie is Uncle Lou and Aunt Margie. As we grew up, of course, they became Lou and Margie. But the three Nelson kids grew up with the three Benden girls. So uh, Kathleen and I, same age, Greg and Susan, the same age, Barbara and uh, Carrie. Too long. Too long. I know, that's funny. Anyway, I, I made a list uh, here and I never put this list be, uh, together before, but the, the first, the first I have experienced because of Lou, he was Uncle Lou at the time, the very first baseball mitt I ever owned was given to me by a Lou and I can't figure out why my dad never gave me one. <laughs> Lou was the one who gave me that, uh, my first baseball mitt, the first time I ever got to drive somebody else's car. It was after eighth grade graduation and Lou was there. They were leaving on, they were leaving on permanent return just a day or two later. And he said, hey Dwight, you want to, uh, you want to drive the car home? I could not believe it. I think my dad was waiting for me to graduate from college before we could make that trip. <laughs> but uh, Lou, Lou made the uh, made the offer. The first man to ever wash behind my ears. We we went to you know you saw this the picture of Japan Missionary College, and that's where Lou and uh, Margie and the girls were living, and. Um, Anyway, Mar Aunt Margie obviously noticed that I was, my folks had dropped us off while they packed to go on furlough. And so we spent a week with them and she sent Lou in, Uncle Lou in, said, hey Dwight, how's the bath going? Hey, can I take a, a look at your ears? And, and I've had to work this through with uh, therapy over the years, but I'm doing, <laughs> hey. I'm doing better now. now. <laughs> Uh, another another first is the first BB gun. You've already heard about BB guns. When Karen and I, I'm sitting here with Karen, when we came to the seminary, Lou said, Dwight, you got to get a BB gun. So I had that BB gun sitting downstairs. Another first, my first worship class and my first preaching class in the seminary taught by by Lou Vanden. He, he just is, uh, he, he, he is without peer. And what a blessing for me as a kid that grew up with his girls to sit at his feet as he taught. I got one more first, on, and that is he presided over the, the death of my first parent who died. And I remember being there in Calamasa, and I see uh, 
can see the background of that church. Turn it off. <clears throat> uh, but in Calamesa, Lou stood up. We asked him, would you be willing to uh, conduct the hom preach the homily at Dad's memorial service? And he stood up. And I, I'll never forget what he preached on. He preached from Revelation 1 and that line, and I hold the keys of the grave. And he ministered to our tribe in, in such a such a major way. And so I just join everybody else lining up to say, we love you, Margie. You're sitting there with the McMillans and uh, love you, Kathleen and Susan and Barbara. I'm, I can hardly wait to queue up again in heaven because it's going to be a long line that Lou will be receiving. And I'll be at the very end of the line. I know my place. But when I get to the front of that line, Lou's going to say, yo, Dwight, what's the latest good book you've read? And we'll fall in the conversation. God bless all of you. You're in our hearts and you're in our prayers. Thank you. Uh, next up is Judy Peters. Thank you, Margie, girls. I never thought that last Sabbath before the pandemic, when we had our Sabbath meetings, that that would be the last one altogether. And I'm looking forward to having the next one by the River of Life, how about? Let's make an appointment and have another Sabbath afternoon meeting. And the one memory I wanted to share had to do with the Grace Group. Lou got together at the School of Nursing and we went through what's so amazing about Grace first and then many other volumes over the year, it ministered to me and whenever asked, it was the most important thing that ever happened to me at the School of Nursing. So thank you, Lou and Margie. Uh, next we have uh, R.M. Johnson. All right. Uh, I, uh, I got to know, uh, to know Lou Minden when we were both students at the old theological seminary at Tacoma Park, Washington, D.C. Then later, after we were missionaries in Korea, Lou and Margie came to Japan, which were made them kind of neighbors. And I had the opportunity to go and, uh, and visit Japan a couple of times. And I remember one time Lou and Margie extended their hospitality to me and I was able to uh, stay with them and watch the banter between them. And then uh, we became colleagues at the seminary uh, in, at Andrews University. And, and taught together on the same faculty. I was thinking of the qualities of, of Lou that I remember. I remember humility, kindliness, friendliness, his, his gentleness and his joy. And it, it, it suddenly hit me. Uh, there's a list of 12 fruits of, uh, 10 fruits of the spirit in, uh, in Galatians 5. And, and Lou ticks off all of them. But one particular thing that I remember was his ability to rebuke a person without it feeling like a rebuke. That happened to me once. We had a, a reunion of the old seminary people in Tacoma Park. And Lou was there and I was there and we got to talking after one of the meetings and I was complaining about something. And I, I'm, I won't reveal what it was, and I won't reveal what he said, but it was the kindest rebuke I'd ever received, and it had a profound influence on me. I hope people noticed that I became a better person after that. I don't know if that was that noticeable, but I feel like I, he made me a better person, and I look forward to seeing him again. Kathy Mathias. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. There we go. Thank you. It was close. It's a Mathis, but that's fine. I'll go by any, but anything anybody says is fine. Hi, Aunt Margie. Hi, Elizabeth and Barbara. Hi, nice to see you all. It was a beautiful service. What can I say about Uncle Louie? I'm another missionary kid. I'm one of the Brecht children, and I knew Uncle Louie since the age of six years old. Um, the three L's that I think describe him, full of life, full of love, and full of laughter. And the memories that we had in Japan were amazing. 
and then reconnecting again here in California when we all discovered we were still here and having fun again. Um, there's so many stories that could be told, but the Venden family, the Nelson family, and the Brech family, um, I call the three musketeer families because we all grew up in Japan, in Yokohama, separated from the other missionaries. And so we all became very close family members. So the Nelson family and the Venden family are my family as well. And it's so wonderful to be able to have adopted aunts and uncles and an extended brother and sister family system that a lot of people never ever get to experience. So my, my early or latest memory of, of cherishing Uncle Louie was when I was down visiting um, in Loma Linda and he came up to me and he said, Kathy, you know I love you. And I said, and I love you too. And he goes, thank you for what you do. And he says, you make such a big difference for others. And I should have said, and so do you. I didn't because I was so taken aback by his grace towards me and love towards me. And I hugged him and I thanked him for that. So y'all know I love you. Y'all know I'm grieving right along with you, but I send you all my virtual hugs and kisses and can't wait till we all see each other. So thank you for letting me share with you my love today. And I can't wait to see Uncle Louie again with my parents and the Nelson's parents, Dwight's mom and dad as well, where we can all have Saturday night together again, playing games and laughing our heads off. Thank you. All right. And then we'll take uh, Linda Frederico next. So Linda, we'll go ahead and give you a chance to speak. Um, my... My maiden name was Ludden, Linda Ludden, and I was, again, one of the missionary kids in Japan. The Vendans came to Japan and moved into our Naraha house, uh, and seeing some of those photos reminded me of when I lived there. Uh, Uncle Louie and Aunt Margie were very special, and so were each of their girls. Uh, Kathleen to me at that time. I still have trouble calling her Elizabeth and Susan and Barbara and I just wanted to say how much I love you and thank you. When you came to Singapore on your way through uh, on your permanent return, uh, my father decided he was going to, to uh, play a trick on Uncle Louie. And so he did. Somehow, uh, Uncle Louie and uh, the family were in our home and Uncle Louie set his uh, package of American passports down. My father saw that and so he uh, picked them up and uh, hid them and put them aside and Later, when everything was over and Uncle Louie and Aunt Margie left, uh, my dad still had the passports. And the next day, as I recall the story, Uncle Lou was just frantic because he could not find the passports and they were to be leaving on a plane within a few hours. I just don't recall exactly what happened, but uh, my dad produced those uh, passports that were so coveted and so necessary for travel. And Uncle Lou just looked at my dad because my dad was known for playing these kind of tricks. But anyway, um, we love you, each one. And I also want to say thank you for... Sorry. And I also want to say for Uncle Louie coming to the hospital at Loma Linda when my brother had heart surgery and he stayed there and he and Margie were there the whole time and then they stopped and stepped in to see my brother after his surgery was successful. He prayed for us and it was just so heartwarming. So I want you to know how much you mean to me 
And thank you so much. I love you all. God bless you and keep you. And heaven will be a wonderful place for our reunion. Bye. Hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, let's go on now to uh, Robert Quigley. Hi, Marty and Kathleen and Susan and Barbara. We are bringing you greeting from Orlando, Florida. I want to tell you how much we've enjoyed the program from Orlando. And it was very beautiful and meaningful. And we would we just appreciated all the the wonderful testimonies, the music, and it, just seeing so many friends. We just want you to know we're thinking of you and we love you. And uh, God bless and keep you safe. Bye-bye. I'd just like to say something. That was my mother, Rita Benden Ekfall, and I'm Bonnie Ekfall Quigley. And uh, we love all of you very much. Our, our Aunt Margie and Uncle Lou. Uncle Lou came to visit us in Florida. And after our dinner together, he went back to his hotel and he called me up. And he said, Bonnie, I just loved your apple pie. Could you please give me the recipe? And that was the highest compliment <laughs> from anyone I've ever received on my apple pie. So I have fond memories. And of course, we, we go even farther and deeper than that in our relationship with each other. And um, Lake Nojiri, you showed us all around when I was just a kid, when we were traveling to the Philippines. So we love you, Aunt Margie. We love you, Elizabeth, Susan, and Barbara, dear cousins. And um, we grieve with you. We grieve with you. And may God be close to you right now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. And Clarence and Diana, I believe, are next. Kathy's theme of God sent a man, one of the characteristics she mentioned was uh, humble. My story fits that beautifully. When I was on the staff at the University Church, Lou was my boss. I was there with Marvin in the crowd. And um, we were exploring starting an alternative worship service for students and young adults. And Lou was headed off for a long series of meetings uh, down in, I think in South Africa, somewhere in Africa, Margie would remember. Alternative worship. Pardon? Anyway. And um, so I said to Lou, I said, this idea of starting an alternative worship service for youth and young adults, which would pull people from the sanctuary at the University Church, is developing some momentum. I'm happy to just put a hold on this until you get back. And his response was this. He said, you know, the idea threatens me, but that's not a good reason to stop it. And I have always appreciated Lou's humility. What, and thank you for the service today, Barbara, and all yeah. of you, and Elizabeth, Susan, uh, beautiful service. Thank you much. <laughs> All right, I think next is James. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, I went to Pacific Union College uh, from 1990 to 1994. Uh, I was studying psychology at that time, but I knew that was not my calling. I think it was one of my ways of just running away from what God was trying to do in my life. And just a uh, month and a half before graduating from psychology, I completely surrender myself to the Lord. I rededicate myself to the Lord. And then next thing I know, I was making a call to the religion department, talking to the secretary of uh, Dr. Lou Venden. Uh, I sat down with uh, Dr. Venden and uh, he put together a curriculum for me with directed studies. And, and he told me that uh, if I were to really put my uh, energy and my time into it that I can finish the program in one year. So I stayed another year at Pacific Union College going through the program. Uh, he was my homiletics teacher. Uh, he also was my ministry teacher. And he also took the time as he drove me all the way to Napa Seventh Avenue Church as they had 
one of the net series with uh, Pastor Mark Finley. And um, I still remember uh, we would often talk Japanese uh, with one another more than English. And I enjoy the time. And he would share with me his experience back in Japan. And um, uh, he also played a pivotal role in my father going into ministry as well. So just having that experience, it was just a rich, wonderful experience with Dr. Venden. And uh, uh, at Napa Seventh Avenue Church, when they had the evangelistic meeting, uh, I was wondering what we're going to be doing to assist in that uh, efforts. And he said, James, what we're going to do is we're going to be greeters and we're going to be great at it. And so all throughout the time, we were greeters. And it was one of his ways of just instilling me what ministry and what pastoral ministry is all about. And I have learned from uh, Dr. Venden the joy of ministry and also joy of pastoral care as well. After I graduated, one of the first things that Dr. Venden said, uh, he invited me to his home and he said, uh, James, from this point forward, we are colleagues in ministry. So you have to call me by my first name. Now, being Japanese, that is just forbidden. Uh, that, that's like the, you know, the no-no. Uh, and, and so I said, with all due respect, uh, Dr. Venden, I will not be able to call you by your first name. And we had a bit of an argument, uh, but uh, to this day, I've continued to call him uh, Dr. Venden. Um, I thank the Lord, even after graduating from Pacific Union College, he will check in with me uh, and he will call me and he will talk to me in Japanese. And it was some of the moments where I was really lonely in ministry. He was just there, just following up that pastor's heart. Uh, he has uh, been there for my wedding uh, in the following year, uh, my ordination uh, ceremony, him and also his beloved wife, Marjorie, being there to support me through and through. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to just thank the Lord for the man of God who truly played a pivotal role in me entering into ministry. And not only that, throughout, through the course of my uh, 26 years of ministry, and I thank the Lord for him. It's just so good to see Marjorie. And also after the passing of uh, Dr. Venden, it's been a blessing uh, just getting to know you more, uh, uh, Barbara, and just talking with you, reminiscing with you, uh, and talk about how our home country, our or our Furusato, uh, is in indeed Japan. Uh, and uh, I pray that God's continual comfort and peace will be upon you all uh, as we continue to look forward uh, to the blessed hope that we have in Jesus uh, soon and very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right, I believe uh, it's Mark and Colette Carr next. Hi, Margie. This is Colette and Mark Carr from Alaska. And uh, I uh, got to uh, know uh, Lou later in his life. It was in his late 70s and early 80s when I arrived to the Kalimesa Church. And uh, what better way to be welcomed um, in a, a church at Kalimesa by Lou and Margie's open arms. A little French girl dropping in California and being welcomed by such a lovely, lovely couple. A few years later, Margie and Lou, you uh, gave us this little book, Epic, and um, you uh, wrote, uh, you guys wrote in front, um, beloved friends sharing the story in which we find ourselves. And what he didn't know, what Lou didn't know is that, uh, didn't know at the time, is that this book inspired me to write a play. And, and Lou didn't know that he was going to be my star in the, in the play. And I know it gave him some stress uh, because when he did something, he did it well. And he really wanted to do uh, his part well. And he did, and, and even more, and not only because he was a good actor, but because the part he had was 
a pastor part. So it was uh, just something that could come from his heart. And uh, uh, before letting Mark say a few words, uh, the book ends this like that. This is the gospel. This is the story we are living in. May you play your part well. And Lou said these words at the end of the play. And, and he did. He not only played the part well, he lived the part well as well. We love you, Margie. We miss you, but we are not forgetting you. Bisous, bisous. I had the, un, uh, the unfortunate blessing of following Lou. He was the one who suggested to Colette uh, me to take, uh, to try to fill his shoes in this play. It was a cruel, cruel thing because I was nowhere near as good as Lou. Um, but I just was such, um, blessed so much by Lou, not not just in our church life, but in my faculty life there at Loma Linda at the School of Religion. Um, you know, I, I went through a, a, a divorce while I was there, and, and Lou and, and Ivan, Jerry, uh, David Larson, um, there was no better place on the face of the Adventist world for me to be then right there in the arms of Lou and, and others there on that faculty. Marge, thank you so much for shaping Lou into the person that he was, because we know you <laughs> you were you were there. You were you were the biggest part of Lou uh, side by side. Thank you, Marge. I think next on our list is I think it's I believe it's Bob Soderbloom actually there. You well, Marjorie and Barbara and the rest of the family, um, on behalf of at least the lay uh, membership of uh, Calamesa, uh, we wish you the best. It was a wonderful, awesome uh, memorial service, uh, thinking about uh, Lou. I can just remember um, when you and Marjorie came to join the Calamesa Church, um, I was just really thrilled to know that you were coming out to this little country church uh, to be part of us. Um, and then I always remember when it came to camp meeting time and asking Lou to uh, play on his harmonica, which we heard today. And uh, he would always hesitate for a while. And uh, then when we got him to pay with uh, Doug Mace and so on, he'd say, yeah, let, 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 let me play, I'll play. And it was such a blessing for us to have him play for our camp meeting times. And then always, uh, we frequently sat uh, pew to pew with uh, Marjorie and, and Lou, and uh, we would enjoy singing when it came praise time, uh, like the song, In Jesus' Name We Gathered, and we'd try to hit the highest notes and see which one would do the better job. And Lou usually did that. And uh, he was a great singer. And just lastly, um, when it came time to decorate the Calamesa Church for Christmas, and we asked for volunteers to be there Sunday morning, who was there but Lou? Lou was there. And Marjorie, do you remember? He was climbing ladders. And you told him, that is not for older folks like you, Lou. And he obeyed you, Marjorie. Anyway, we have such great memories of you two. And uh, we just are hoping that at least uh, you folks, uh, Marjorie and the family, can be back with us in Calamesa to worship with us when this COVID gets over. Thank you. Thank you for being such loving people. And we look forward to seeing Lou on that resurrection morning. Thanks again. Thanks, Dr. Bob. I believe we have uh, someone identified as John's AirPad here, or iPad Air, maybe. There we go. Yeah, John and our Pam Gray here. Uh, Marjorie, 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 thank you so much for everything that you and Lou have meant to, to us, surrogate grandparents, uh, mentors, friends, uh, all of the memories, many, many of the sorts of things that have been mentioned that structure our lives. I've been covering some books this week and uh, using a handkerchief to wave goodbye to family <laughs> and friends and, and all the rest. Uh, you have just been very, very central to our lives and remain so. And we just love you very, very much. 
uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to going to turn my iPad over here and see if I can get the the latest edition of the family in here, and just tell you that uh, Macy's here with us, your granddaughter Macy and <laughs> and great grandson Wesley, and we are born three weeks ago. And I'll tell you, we're we're looking forward to that great day when we will get to introduce uh, Lou and Wesley. That'll be a grand day, and thanks for the privilege of being part of all of this today. Mm, thank you so much. I, I believe we have uh, Jay Shelton next. I first knew Lou at Loma Linda University uh, when I did my master's program in two years. He was, past, I, he was pastor of the Loma Linda University Church, where I was a member. And I really appreciated his sermons there because he, he really, uh, I remember him really preaching against the abuse of power and um, hierarchy and things like that. Uh, then uh, I moved to PUC after a stint at Hong Kong. And while I was there at PUC, he became pastor of the PUC church. So I've had him as a pastor twice, but my, my fondest way of remembering Lou is as a colleague for just one year. He uh, came into the religion department and uh, helped me get into the religion department. And I was a colleague of his just one year. And he was so encouraging and so helpful. Uh, and he, like uh, I think somebody before me said, uh, he uh, gave me a rebuke one day that I very much needed and uh, helped to change my life. So I owe a lot to uh, Lou Venden, and I really have appreciated being able to know him. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Gail, I believe you're next. Um, Marjorie and the family, I, I just want to say we, as a, I guess a college student, is when I first became acquainted with the Venden family. And it was Morris that I knew first. But um, I guess that became really real when you guys joined the Calamisa Church. And I got to know Lou and you, and Barbara and the whole family. And I realized that the talk was not just talk, it was real people. And we enjoyed so much getting to know you and to watch you live and to learn how we can get to know God better. And that's been a very special part of my life. And we've really enjoyed recently. Um, I'm only partway through it, but the book that uh, John Paulian edited that Lou and uh, Graham Maxwell did of a series that he put on. And I think the, the best thing about Lou was that he always introduced people to Christ. And as a, as a growing Christian, we really appreciated his input. And he would be missed, but we're so grateful that we're going to meet him again in the throne of Christ. Thank you, Gail, for sharing that. It looks like we have about three more people that uh, would like to speak. And at the end of that, well, it looks like maybe four. And at the end of that, uh, uh, the uh, Barbara has a letter that she would like to, to read as well and share with us that may be our opportunity to close. So it looks like we have four more and then uh, the opportunity for that. Thank you. Ah, next is uh, Tony Nichol. Hi, Barbara and Margie and Elizabeth and Susan, just want to tell you that I love you very much, that um, it was a beautiful service and I got to learn some things that I didn't know. I'm very thankful for the way God works in our lives and brings people into our, into our hearts. And um, Barbara, your dad showed me Jesus. There's just some people that you know that when you meet them, when you spend time with them, you kind of almost feel like you're spending time with someone whose best friend is 
is Jesus. And that has been a blessing. And um, I love you all. I'm thankful for each one of you and um, just have you in my heart today. And Barbara and Marjorie, I just need to add just a, a little note here. Um, Lou was the kindest accepting. When I was struggling with anyone in religious authority, your dad took me in and loved me and uh, I think helped me to go the right direction. So it's truly been an honor to know your family. All right. I believe Greg Nelson is next. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's so good to see so many familiar faces, uh, not the least of which is this precious Benden family. Wow. That was, uh, that was truly a remarkable service. All of you that were, that planned this was just spectacular. I have to admit that one of uh, my more emotional moments uh, were at the beginning and seeing pictures of Uncle Lou and, and Dad uh, together and Mom was in a few of those. And, and then when you played that, uh, was it 1961 version of the choir and the orchestra and those pictures, I go, come on, you just can't, get, you keep amping this thing up. You're like playing with our emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I like dying by that time, uh, but it it was so remarkably uh, not scushy, uh, just absolutely wonderful, and uh, so many memories. Obviously, I just want to I I want to mention just a few because of the impact on me, uh, and everyone's been alluding to this, and Margie. I mean, uh, the love that you and and Uncle Lou had for each other was just, uh, I, as this little boy even there in Japan, um, just noticing that and just sort of, I remember thinking to myself, man, if I could have a, 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 a relationship like that someday in my life, I'd be like the luckiest guy in the world. Uh, that was the impact on me. And then I remember the summer in, uh, in Toyama, Susan, where I think we got married that summer. It was really quite, quite remarkable. <laughs> Do you remember that? Our dads were doing this uh, like evangelistic series and, and uh, they always did the, uh, uh, oh man, the five day plan to stop smoking. Remember that was like central to every evangelistic series any evangelist was giving in those days. <laughs> and we went one time to one of those meetings and the, the movie that was being shown uh, was of this couple and there's this, this great romantic scene and and so we go home and we look at each other so as you remember this I think right we say you know what let's just let's just pretend that this scene we're doing this scene so I stand and I, <laughs> anyway I won't go into all the details <laughs> but it was a classic moment uh, just uh those kinds of memories with all of you are just remarkable. And um, it, it was life changing for all of us kids. And uh, the other one was when we were in to Toyama, I think, I thought it was you at Margie and Uncle Lou that gave us a, co a, a record of Roger Williams playing these hymns. Uh, it seems like it was you folks that gave us this. We were having people that would give us stuff from the States and all this. And I remember um, dad turning that on for Sabbath morning, Roger Williams, this great pianist playing these hymns and, and the song Abide With Me came on. And I, I forget how old I was, it's like first grade, but I was already started in piano. And I said to myself, by God's grace, I am going to learn how to play this Roger Williams arrangement of Abide With Me, even if it kills me. Well, so <laughs> later it almost did kill me. I worked so hard to play this thing. But you know what? I learned that piece and I have played it forever since. Every time I do a concert or I play, I play that hymn arrangement. And thanks to you folks. Thank you very much. You started me on this. <laughs> this great path 
uh, with the, with the piano. It was it was remarkable. All the ways you also it was your sailing and the sailboat. What was it, Momo? Is that what the name of the sailboat? No. Yeah. Toad it was four. A, it was a, four. Yeah, oh, that's right. T yes, Toad four. And Momo was the was your uh, rowboat. Or was that our rowboat? Craig, <laughs> that was Craig. That was our the yes. rowboat was ours. Our uh, we had uh, the Momo. Oh yeah, they had okay. The tow, they had uh, the tow four. Well, I'm embarrassed to say that when I'm looking at all of us here, we all look a lot older. I mean, this is like embarrassing, man. We're like, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that sailboat, and there was that that uh, video of the sailboat. Oh man, I go back to that. I go, this is where the pa my passion, and then mom and dad picked up this whole sailing thing, thanks to uh, Aunt Margie and Uncle Lou. And uh, that was my beginning of sailing, and I've been sailing ever since. I have my captain's license, and you know, I've sailed all over. So thank you, thank you, thank you for Roger Williams. I'm, I'm thinking that might be the case, and for <laughs> sailing in our lives, mm -hmm. and for that brief. Uh, a uh, moment there, Susan, for being married to you. That was just outstanding. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I everything that everybody has said, uh, I would echo that. Just the uh, the love that we have felt from you, Aunt Margie, from Elizabeth. I used to call you, however, Kathleen, and you used to make fun of me for three syllables, Kathleen, and uh, Susan and Barbara, and uh, Susan, your son, Jacob, that was an outstanding vocal number. Jacob, I am so impressed, man. I would like to know you better. That was outstanding. So all the memories, I just want to say thank you. And I was talking to Carrie just after the service and she wasn't able to, to join us here, but she said, don't, don't forget to, to say hi to Barbara and put my name in this. And Dwight, maybe you're going to say some things later. And then as the older one, you can tie it off, but I already gave uh, the tribute. You were just late in getting on. <laughs> okay. That's, that, that's pretty, uh, pretty true. All right. Anyway, we love you. We love you. Vendens. I cannot tell you enough. And I miss uncle Lou. I'm, I'm agreeing with James earlier. I could never, call Uncle Lou, Lou, even though we were pastors together, college pastors, uh, I couldn't do it. It's always Uncle Lou. And uh, when the resurrection comes, that's the title I will give to him. Uncle Lou, really, really, really good to see you again. So lots of love to all of you, Vendens. Thank you for being in our lives. Thank you. All right. Eliana, I believe it's your turn. Hi. Hi, Barbara and Marjorie and Elizabeth. <laughs> um, I had the privilege to take care of Lou at Linda Valley, and I'm also speaking on behalf of Raina because she wanted to speak, but she's um, she feels like she's going to cry if she does talk. <laughs> um, I also wanted, I just wanted to mention that I miss having our little talks when I would try to get away from work and just sit in your room and talk to you guys for like an hour and then be like, okay, I have to go back to work now <laughs> and listening to your stories and listening to it here today it's just like a reiteration of like everything that I heard and it really made me miss Blue and you guys even more um I also tell Raina's story that she wanted to tell about her little pig um the little pig that she had that she had for one day and she could not take care of it at all she tried to give it a bath and she told this story to Lou and Marjorie and um, a few weeks later, she would he would talk and be like, how's that pig? <laughs> Out of nowhere, and just talk about that pig all the time. And that would be the only thing he would remember all the time. Um, but yeah, I just remember his laugh and um, listening to the songs that he was singing and um, about the PhD song. I was like, I can hear him singing that right now. <laughs> I just miss you guys. And I wanted to say hi, pop in. Love you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And Gary, it is your turn. Well, I'm I'm privileged to be part of the Vendon family. Um, just I've been writing down a few little memories here. Um, Margie, 
you probably don't know how important, I believe it was Thanksgiving of 1968 was to me. Uh, we had Thanksgiving dinner in your home there in uh, Barron Springs. I was in seventh grade. You know, my mom was a bit of a health nut and that's the first time I had sour cream on a baked potato. I, I had, I think I had uh, a little baked potato with my sour cream. I was just, that was glorious. And, uh, and divinity fudge. I had never been allowed to get within a mile, I think, of divinity fudge. And I managed to sneak quite a few pieces during that Thanksgiving day. And I felt great for it. I'm, I didn't overeat, I guess. But, uh, you know, it's just crazy little memory of uh, clear back in, in 68. Um, I have uh, always felt a privilege to be part of the uh, famous Vendens because I've always uh, been asked if I'm related to uh, Morris and Lewis. And uh, so I always say when I introduce myself now, I, people ask who I am, I say I'm part of the unfamous Venden line. And I always was uh, honored to be, to have those great cousins out there. Um, probably one of the highlights of my life was when, for some wonderful reason, Morris and Lewis both decided to join me for a series of evangelistic meetings in Chico, California in 1988. We spent five weeks together. Well, one of them was there all the, you know, off and on. They couldn't get the whole week clear. I was the evangelist in Northern at the time. And, uh, but just hanging out with Morris and Lewis for those five weeks was like such a phenomenal privilege for me. A few weeks or months later, they had a, Morris and Lewis did a we could pray together at PUC and ask my wife Marilyn and I to do the music. And that was such an honor. And I just recall one day Malcolm Maxwell had uh, us all over to his house. And I remember I'm 33 and I'm sitting with these incredible great men to me, Morris, Lewis, and Malcolm. And I, I still remember just kind of sitting in awe there that I was allowed to mix with such um, wonderful and godly men. I don't mean to just say they were just famous, but men of God that I truly looked up to. Um, and then the last time I saw Lou and you, Margie, was at my wife's 60th birthday celebration there in Redlands. Barbara, thanks for bringing them out. I remember sitting there, and, and this is classic Lou. Um, across the table from you guys was a young man and his significant other who uh, tattooed up, um, totally unchurched. They were the, he was the uh, engineer for our last CDs that Marilyn and I did with our band here in Glendale, Arizona. Um, and you guys had, and they, and they just visited Japan. And you guys had this wonderful conversation with these people and as usual, mixed so well, uh, drop the churchy thing and just mixed with people. And I was sitting there at the end of the table in awe of the conversation and just enjoying seeing uh, Lou mix well with people. Um, incredible time. Uh, so blessed to be part of this family, get to uh, tag along with the famous Vendens. And uh, I was brought to tears by the uh, program the, the, the memorial service you guys put together. Absolutely incredible. Uh, thanks for letting me be part of the family and uh, thanks for putting the picture of Lou on the back of my Goldwing motorcycle into the program. I really appreciate that. That meant a lot to me. God bless you all. Thank all of you so much for all that you shared. I know that uh, Kathy tells me that uh, there's a letter that they would like to share. I'm not sure if uh, Kathy is going to be reading that or Barbara's going to be reading that or how that's going to happen here, but we'll give them an opportunity to do that as, as well now. So uh, this was a letter that dad wrote in response to receiving a letter about being uh, made professor emeritus at Loma Linda University. Um, and it was to Dr. Richard Hart, the chancellor, and Dr. Gerald R. Winslow, dean of the faculty of religion, et cetera. Uh, September 30th, 2003, my dear friends, 
This past Sabbath's mail brought a letter from the chancellor's office. I checked first to see if it was a paste on address label. <laughs> <laughs> Assumed it was likely an invitation to contribute to a worthy cause, <laughs> and then noted the words emeritus professor on the envelope and wondered, dot, dot, dot. My distinct impression has been that the title emeritus is reserved for those who spend their entire career, or nearly so, with the conferring institution. Thus, you will understand my surprise at the message I read. I'm touched, pleased, encouraged and grateful, still hunting for the right words to explain to myself just why this has such delightful meaning for me and Marjorie. Thank you both and all concerned. I'm rushing over to have Melanie laminate the card. He had enclosed a card uh, and he had said you could have it laminated. <laughs> I'm rushing over to have Melanie laminate the card. After all, the last line reads, valid for life. I hope to make use of it for a long time. <laughs> With warmest regards, Louis E. Venden, Emeritus Professor of Religion. Wonderful. Margie, do you have anything you want to say to anybody that's been here that comments? Sorry. I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the response and love from all these dear people. And and the last next to the last one by our beloved Greg Nelson, even though it was full of humor, just going back to their being the little kids and he be he and our darling Susan pretending <laughs> that they got married. Mm -hmm. I, I was at the top of my <laughs> response. To you. Yeah. All right. Oh, they were all wonderful, absolutely. And thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Ken, mm -hmm. for hosting this. Mm -hmm. We really Cala appreciate Mesa it. Church. Yeah, for the Cala Mesa Church. I want to say a special thanks to um, Bama and Bapa's oldest grandson, first grandson, Jake, Jacob Charles Venden Barrow, who sang the song at the end, but he also did a lot a lot of work putting this together so a big thank you to him for that and everybody involved yes everybody yes. lots of people put a lot of heart and a lot of thought and a lot of time and effort into it and we just appreciate it so much thank you for all of your love and um for just sharing this time with us yeah and for the beloved family of ours that hosted this, <laughs> the McMillans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yes. you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yes. God bless. See you in the morning. <laughs> All right. Well, what an honor it has been for us to be able to share this time with you and to have had the opportunity to walk alongside of you and the Lou for so many years. So thank you for uh, giving us the privilege of being able to share the time and we want to thank the rest of you for just coming by and sharing and and i know that there'll be lots of opportunities to continue to do that through uh, emails through phone calls through times that you're all together as family so thank you for being with us this afternoon uh, let me just pray now to kind of close the time father in heaven what an incredible gift it is that we have shared uh, a life well lived, a life that reflected you and your character and your love, who taught us so much in so many ways. And we are grateful. And we look forward to the time when we will get to enjoy that gift in its fullness again when you return. So it's an anticipation of that and in gratefulness for what we have that we continue to share and cherish that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.